It's been about a month since we had our tap. So a lot has happened here on our farm in the last month. So it's been extremely busy. I've not been able to post. I've been able to film, but I haven't been able to post. And so I just wanted to get a video up today just because I am one, wanting to encourage people that are thinking about growing their own food, raising their own animals, milk cows, <laughs> having dairy animals. I just, I would love to show you how great I am at it. I'm not, I'm a newbie. I think there's a lot of mistakes that you make as a newbie. Hi Bruno. Bell's mad at me, I put a halter on her this morning, but. We need to get to a point that she's actually a little more stationary and he is, he is doing better. He, she's, she's still very worried about him. She's a good mama. She's got to come her eyesight, but what's happening is I'm spending a lot of time having to chase her <laughs> and that's not very conducive to what we're trying to accomplish with the milking. So, um, she will stand still. It's just where she stands still after I've washed her is the problem, so. I definitely think there is a value in having someone who knows what they're doing um, mentor you. It's 6.30 in the morning. Um, I'm telling you, we got so lucky when we got Belle. And it's not just because she's a great cow, but Monty, the guy that my husband and I drove to Weatherford to get her from, has been very attentive to every message, every text, <laughs> every phone call, um, even calling me going, what do you mean by that? And like clarifying and it's so helpful. Oh my goodness. And I mean, this is not the first cow that we've ever bought, but just that accessibility when he knows, like, you're new at this, but I think you're going to be okay. But but he's a hands-on helper. So, extremely helpful yesterday. So, yesterday he called. He said, to, in the evening, you need to make sure that you go down and milk her and give her some relief. Because the baby's not going to be emptying all of that. And then in the morning, do the same. Um, I will share with you later about all my stupidity and mistakes that I've already made um, when it comes to milking and setting up for a milk cow. We'll talk about that later. And I'm finding out along the way, especially with animals, gardening, if my plant dies, yeah, that's not fun. But if my animal dies, that's a whole other story. And my heart just aches. We got very sick, our family did, um, with COVID the week that Bruno was born. And so on top of <laughs> learning and figuring out what we're doing, we also were trying to recover and take care of each other. It was like one person at a time was getting sick, really sick, and just struggling to get anything done. At that point, it was what has to be done. And um, we tried to help each other, but man, it just, it wore us out. And it's been a month of basically just trying to catch up from that illness. And so I do, I did film, but I, I haven't posted. And so... There will be videos coming out um, later that are kind of backdated and that's why. But one thing I wanted to do, and it was a lot of work, <laughs> was document what it looked like to be a first time I dairy just, mom. I hope that you're encouraged by this. You do not need to do what I'm doing. What I want you to understand is that there are processes and I have, first of all, it's my first time to milk an animal, but it's Belle's first time to be milked. And it's her first time to be a mom and to have milk. And so we both, I feel like we're on this really big learning curve. And um, that has made it a little harder, but also more fun. So. <laughs> what? Bruno. What's he doing? He's like putting his feet by you. Because he doesn't want He's goofy. He 
He's like, I already drank a bunch of it. Mom, how does how does the milk know when to stop though? The milk? Mm hmm Well, it's supply and demand, so she'll have milk until we quit telling her body to make milk. Constructive criticism is fine. I'm just asking you not be harsh with me because I'm very aware of the situation and I'm not, this is not a how-to video. This is a get some perspective on what it's like to have a milk cow or a dairy animal for the first time and your first time because it is time intensive. Once you have a system, it's going to be awesome, but it's time intensive. And so I feel like it's very easy to over romanticize and I... I'm not going to say that I did that. I think I was very aware that it was going to be a lot. Mom, I need to see, like, what the milk is. It's right here. I can't see it in the video. Can you see it? I don't see it in the video. I see it, like, it turns yellow. Yeah. What? Back up, please. I can't breathe. So, we've just developed this trust relationship, and... It does not go the way I want it every morning. And some mornings are much easier than others. And we were doing really, really well. And then the grass started growing because we got rain the same week that Bruno was born. And <laughs> Did y'all enjoy the grass today? Is that so nice, Mama? She's like, you've got my treats. But I want you to have that perspective, like, that was my first time milking. That was even milk we were gonna drink. That was that was colostrum that we saved for the calf or the calves that are coming in May, but it's what we had to do. I have to milk her out. If I'm gonna go through that process, I'm gonna go on and just save that milk. Um, and it also is part of just the process of teaching her like this is a bucket. This is the noise the bucket makes. And that way, if we had to dump the milk, not a big deal. It's better to start early, start practicing early, teaching her what's expected, teaching yourself what's expected and kind of, um, troubleshooting and fine-tuning. So, enjoy. Narrating again. So this is my first time to ever clean her teats, to ever have to sit and figure out, okay, what am I doing here? What's the purpose of this? So, um, I'm using a little bit of a Castile soap and water. It's a gentle Castile soap just to clean. I had ordered some iodine. I did want to do an iodine teat dip, but it was not here yet. And so I just wanted to clean her up really, really well. So I'm using a cloth for the initial part of that. And then I go back at the end and I'm using um, paper towels. They're shop towels, little blue shop towels. And I'm just doing one at a time. And... Um, one teat at a time with that and really cleaning her teats well before I start milking. A lot of this, the whole, pro oh, she did actually kick me. Look at her. Um, a lot of this process is to one, get her used to me touching her udders, which by the way, her, her little teat is so, they're sensitive. Like, I don't know if you've had a baby before, but I remember they're very, very swollen. The hormones are flowing and everything's really sensitive. Plus that baby's been chewing on them and so she's very tender and, and just being knowledgeable of that and, and being aware of that is a good idea. So um, as much as, I mean, remember, she's never been milked before. So she's being very, very gentle and very, very um, loving with me. I did put some olive oil on my hands. Um, in the end, I feel like the teat dip is more gentle on her teats. She's not getting as dried out. The first time I used this metal bucket, it's a stainless steel um, seamless bucket, but it's very, very noisy. It seemed to kind of make her a little bit anxious. It's also heavy to hold. And you see, she does not love me milking from that side. We, um, we've kind of gotten in our groove now. That's not really a side I milk from very much. I try to stay on the other side to do all four teats. Um, but this is all very irritating. And I didn't realize it, but she actually had cut under her udder. She's got like a gash under her udder where she had walked through a thorn bush and it cut her, her teat, and so she's part of her kicking. This is the only time that I can really remember her kicking um, was later on I realized that she had a, a cut on her udder and on one of her teats that I had to take care of. So you see her with that tail. Um, 
swish, swish moving around, but, um, it was very athletic, uh, this milking episodes <laughs> initially with her just figuring each other out. Most likely in the future, my next, um, uh, time that I have a cow that's freshening, I will start while they are pregnant, haltering them or putting them in a head gate, um, or a stanchion, just preparing them, kind of getting them in that routine before the baby ever gets here. Because I feel like I was, I was starting behind the curve with her and, um, and that's okay, but there she goes walking out into the field. And, um, we spent a lot of time effort to milk her struggling out enough that she's comfortable and chasing her around the yard. I'm going to voice over narrate here since I'm out in the field with her. Her biggest issue is making sure her baby is safe. She is a fantastic mother. And my biggest issue is he will not nurse in front of me. And so I'm thinking she's very full. He seems like he's just laying around all the time. So I'm trying to get him onto the teat and he is stubborn and he's not going to do it. But as long as he was in her line of vision, she is more than willing to stand there and let me milk her. But at this time, he kept kind of running away and going and laying down by the fence line. And that's where she needed to be because that's where her baby was. So there's a lot of going in circles and just trying to give her the relief um, of course, this is her first time to calf. It's her first time to freshen. And so it's all very new and very uncomfortable. So she, I think, is doing very well. And a lot milkier. The front teeth were more colostrum. So he's doing pretty well. He pooped. I definitely saw poop this morning. So that's a good sign. I don't know. I don't have anything to compare it to. Um... I know that it's probably not normal to chase your cow around her pen to milk her, but I also did not want her to feel like she was being attacked or um, threatened in any way. As soon as I walk out, he starts nursing. I'm totally fine with that. Well, now he's doing weird things. I'm on a lunch break. I did not get hay out here this morning. She had enough to last till lunchtime and I ran Paxton up to school and came back home and have been in meetings after meetings, trying to catch up from yesterday. I did what had to be done yesterday at work so I didn't miss a full day because I knew it would be a lot of catch up today. So, my darling girl, she was ready for her hay. Just wanna show you the difference I've shown y'all for weeks, what her udder looked like before. Um, these, these little teats, they are further back. And so they're a little harder for me to get to. I always imagine those cows that have teats like dragging on the ground, but she's got, hers are suspended really well, but they are kind of a little bit more behind her legs. So Kate from uh, Venison for Dinner, I just, was uh, reading and going over one of her videos where she's talking about milking from behind. And this morning I had to do that out there, but milking from behind on these back teats actually worked better for me. I just need to work on that. But this girl is just hungry. I'm trying this. I don't know if it works, but what I read said, put the harness in the bucket, put the feet on top of it, and once she starts eating, then sweep it up over her head. What are you doing? You smell food? You know mama's got treats, huh? I got treats. Come on. But I also need you to help me with something. Different harness. Change it. Change it. Woo! Okay. Can I get the smaller size and you've got the biggest hand or what? Why is it 
coming up today, Diva. Okay. Well, I am gonna call Daryl. Hi, buddy. Look at you coming up here with your mom. I need to do brush. I don't have a brush yet. Goodness, girl. Mm. Ooh. What? What's your, oh, you ate it all? Yeah, you did. What's baby doing? Is he hungry? He had to have been eaten given the he's still peeing. That's crazy. Girl, he's still peeing. Okay, yeah, you're very full. Good job, Bub. Bruno, you did good. And your mom's apparently gonna lick it. That's what she does. Hey baby. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Come here. I know, because my halter didn't work. Sweet girl, come see me. Eat your hay. Come eat your hay. I know. Come eat your hay. I don't have anything, but I gotta clean these, your udders and milk you out. Are you gonna poop while we do this? Really? Oh, I know. Tinder, tinder. Sorry. Those are the ones he's been touching. I know, they're tender. Well, I'm not this, but it's really bothering me. Hey, Bubby. Okay, can you stand still for me, please? She's like, yeah, sure I will. All right, I've got a little olive oil I'm putting on my hand. Hey, Bubby, what I decided Is this bucket. I'm going to try the plastic bucket, which makes a little less noise. Is he going to try to eat? Of course. See, of course he is. Hey, Bubby, I don't want to take your food. I never thought milking would involve chasing a cow, but, um, well, it does for me.
just a quick narrator insert here. The, the whole process of having a dairy cow, learning how to milk a dairy cow, learning what to do with the milk. Um, this first day that I milked her, it was not her first day since having the baby, but that milk was very thick. It was colostrum. It was very, um, you can see right there, just extremely thick and struggling to get through that filter. And I just knew everything I read said, if the filter slows down, you've got mastitis. And um, I had to talk to a few people. The, the vet's office was extremely unhelpful. Um, so I did spend a lot of time just stressing and worrying over this, but you see how frothy and thick. We did save that colostrum for the calves that we have coming in May. And so I just froze what I got out of this, but I did want to strain it and try to keep it as clean as possible um, because I am walking through a field during this time trying to get her milk and teach her how to be milked. And this has definitely been a huge learning curve. So um, I will I will time lapse it here in a second. As you don't have to watch this, but as we're as we're going through um, this initial straining situation and trying to figure out how and what I'm doing. Um, it did take quite a bit of time that first couple times and now we've got a system that's just very, very fast. Your mom is slower than molasses at doing anything right now. Okay, this is really hot. You understand? So carry it carefully. You'll want to go put it on the table and then grab a spoon. You're so silly. I love you. Thank you for joining me for the longest milking video ever today. <laughs> I really, really hope that you guys learned something. I, if nothing else, that you laughed a little bit. Uh, for sure, this last month, there has been a lot of learning and a lot of laughter going on. I just hope that that continues and we get to continue sharing this journey with you. Thanks for joining us today.